Good evening, friends. Amen. How are you? Thank you very much. We want to make this session very interactive. This is how it will be going. Today, we have brought parents and children together just for a start to lay the foundation. Then from tomorrow, parents will be by themselves and we will be by ourselves. And also, we want to have uh, a closing session where we'll come together, we will work it out and announce it to you with uh, the novels. So here, it will be me and Mrs. Svanda, and uh, in the church it will be Pastor and Mrs. Ndov. If uh, there are things that you have to look forward to in life, look forward to those who are young, to getting a job, getting employed, and getting your first salary. That's something good, you'll enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, also, if there is something to look forward to in life, look forward to a honeymoon. Look forward to a honeymoon where you will be by yourself with the young man you have chosen, with the young lady you have chosen just by yourselves out there and be naughty by yourselves just be naughty by yourselves engage in sanctified naughtiness sanctified mischief blessed mischief and uh, come back one of uh, the, uh, not a good theologians, he says, this is blessed frenzy. Look forward to a blessed frenzy where you will be by yourselves out there unknown to other people and be naughty. Look forward to that. And uh, you will find it's much more exciting than your first paycheck. So, those who are looking forward to that, I may not ask you to raise your hand because your dad is here. Some of you, your mom may be here. They may ask you, what are you looking forward to? They so, saw. Let's keep it like that. But something very blessed. Marriage is biblical. Marriage is holy. Paul says the marriage bed is holy. If ever there is a gift that God gave to us, as we look at the Bible, there are two things that we that survived sin. It is the Sabbath and also it is marriage. And somebody says, uh, in marriage, this is when we can enact God. This is when we can experience the divine love as we have uh, intimacy, sexual intimacy. It is an enactment of uh, the divine connection, how God is one. Let them be one as we are one. In John 17, that's what Jesus says. And God is one. He is one. Uh, you read in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, we are told, uh, Hear, O Israel, chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Elohim, Elohai, Ehad. And uh, you got to 
Genesis 2, verse 24. A man shall leave his father and mother, the two shall become one flesh. The same word, a heart, which is used for the unity of God in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. It's the same word which is used in Genesis 2, verse 24. The two shall become one, a heart. So the unity of a wife and a husband, that sexual intimacy, it is a reflection of the unity of God. God is one. So in sex, God allows us to experience divinity. How divinity is mysteriously, mystically united together. And for sure, it is a divine frenzy. And uh, therefore, this evening, I am talking to people who have experienced the divine frenzy and those who are looking forward to the divine frenzy. The Bible, as we have said, tells us marriage is holy. And for tonight, I want to quickly provide the biblical foundations for this divine friends. Without the Bible, if ever there is something that can frustrate your life, if ever there is something that can complicate your life, it's sex. If ever there is something that can revitalize your life, if ever there is something that can re-energize your life, give you life, boost your self-esteem, make you to feel human, and uh, make you to forget all the troubles that are there, remove you from Zimbabwe, put you in another world, some mystical world, it's, it's sex. But if there is something that can frustrate you, that can complicate your life, it's also sex. Why? Because it has to be based on the Bible, biblical foundations. And therefore today, we are together with our parents and we want to lay some very important foundations. The first foundation that we have in the Bible, for you to enjoy sexuality, for you to have a meaningful sexual life, uh, it has to be based on divine injunctions. Genesis 2 verse 24, a man shall leave his father and mother and that live unto his wife and the two shall become one. The first thing for you to enjoy this gift, you have number one to be married. Outside of marriage, this gift can become a curse. Number one, it has to happen only in marriage. And outside of marriage, let me use the language of uh, Pastor A. Uh, Chichi Nana. Uh, you will burn yourself. Chichi Pasop. Uh, it will kill you. Without here, without being humorous, let me tell you, it will kill you. It has killed people that I know. I know people who are dead. Some, my age mates, some I know I grew up with, they are dead, buried underneath. Why? The doctor should have written cause of death, sex. But they never write that. They will write any other thing. But the cause of death was sex in the wrong place. So it can kill you. Mary. And uh, uh, Paul says in Romans, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he says, 
It's good to marry. If you feel you are burning with passion, marry. Get married. So passion can only be solved in marriage. Marry. Number two, what we discover, establish in the Bible, for you to have a meaningful sexual life, you need those who are senior to you to guide you. To guide you. Uh, don't just get into a relationship without alerting your parents. Don't tell them after you have seen that I have seen this one while in love. Mommy, is he good? No, before, as he's proposing you, as he's telling you that I love you, go, if you are afraid of your dad, tell your mom, Mommy, he is proposing me. He told me he loves me. What's your opinion? Mom, that girl, I love her. What do you think? It sounds a little bit un African, it sounds, but it is the best route to take. That's the best route to take. You see, love is intoxicating. When you are in love, when you love somebody, you don't think straight. It's infatuating. When you see him, you only see superlatives, the best of the best. The way he smiles, the way he sprays his perfume, the way he talks, everything is bewitching. Love is bewitching. You can't think straight when there is a beautiful girl standing before you. You only see heaven. You see an angel. Oh, Lord, thank you for showing me an angel, Gabrieles is here before me but if you are not careful after marriage you will be seeing luciferex right before you so get counsel from those who are senior your parents they love you they care about you and ask them mom what do you think, dead? What do you think? If you're afraid of your dead, ask your mom. What do you think? And they will tell you a very, very honest opinion. More than other people, they will be very, very honest. Every parent wants his or her daughter to marry. It, it, it makes us proud. I mean, when your daughter gets married and you are taking a right there before the pastor in church walking your daughter standing up when your son is getting married and you're standing up may the father and mother please stand up you think that is a small feeling it's better than getting a doctorate to see your daughter getting married i tell you the feeling you have the fulfillment that you have so these parents love you they are not competing for you. They don't want the girl. Your dad does not want the girl. So he won't defraud you of your girlfriend. Tell him. Your mom is not competing for a boyfriend with you. So you are not telling a competitor. And I'll tell you a few reasons why you need to tell your parents. I'll just mention those two for now. One. Why do you need to tell your parent? We, we know the history of some families. Not all of them. But we know the history of some families. There is, I'll go to the Bible first. You go to Genesis chapter 34. You have the experience of Dina and Shechem. Uh, Abraham uh, no, it's uh, Jacob says, my daughters, my children cannot marry here. Dina falls in love with uh, somebody from Kenya, Shechem. And uh, Abraham actually, even earlier, Genesis chapter 24, 
he advised his servant Eliezer. He said, please make sure my son does not marry among these people. They are, they are families which are very good. And they are families which have some habits that your parents know that is most likely that this habit may have also spilled to the children. I'll outline a few of those habits. Habit number one that exists in some families. There are families which don't pray, which wake up in the morning, no prayer. They go to sleep in the evening, no prayer. And for your wife to learn to pray in marriage, when she has not practiced it at home, it will be a journey. Yes, she may get there, your husband, it will be a journey. Uh, so, those are habits, but that's not the only, only habit that you, that may be a problem. Let me quickly get to the one which will make you to be very attentive. There are families which don't know how to use money. There are families which have a demon of poverty. Demon of poverty. Let me tell you. There are families when they get money, the mother gets money, it's Christmas Day. Once there is money, it's Christmas Day. The money has to be spent and finished. Then go and borrow after finishing. There are families like that, which every time mommy is putting on a new dress, expensive dresses, she has no house, she has not developed a home, there is no family home, but mommy knows how to dress very well. Dad has the most expensive shoe you can think about. He drives the best car you can think about. And those habits, they go into the children. They go into the children. You marry that woman from such a family with such a mindset. You take her into your home. She will bring those habits every time there is money. You say, they say, the joint account, she sees a dress, no budget. Oh, this dress, I feel like money. So nice. So nice. Buys. No food for the month. All the money is finished on the dress. And there are people who don't love to work. There are families which don't love work. Indolent families. Lazy. They wake up 9 o'clock, just sleeping. All they know is television. Big plasma. Just watch there. You watch Anupama, repeat Anupama again tomorrow night. What you watch uh, at night, you watch again during the day. A repeat watching. You watch soccer, Nigeria versus Cote d'Ivoire tomorrow morning. You watch again. What happened? Let me revise the match. There are families with such habits. No culture of hard work. I usually say, before you fall in love with a guy, check on his hands. Are there blisters on his hands? If there are no blisters, he's telling you, you are marrying danger. Pass up. Uh, there is poverty is knocking at your door. 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 Why don't you answer? Poverty is knocking. No culture of hard work. People who don't know how to use their opportunities. When opportunities come, there are families like that. Who are indolent, who don't love to utilize opportunities. You just go to the yard. The yard 
It has never been done. Yeah, I was a train to it. It's just uh, Sahara Desert or whatever you may think about, or is the Amazon forest. As you get into the home, this is just the Amazon forest. Then you take somebody from such a family who has been uh, cultured in such an environment and say, let me live with this woman, let her make miracles in my life. I want this woman to make me a man to take care of my heart. When her own yard and her, at her own home is looking so shabby, you will have those struggles. And uh, let me tell you, when there is death in the home, when there is poverty, when you are hungry, you have not eaten well, you can't enjoy sex. You can't. Ask your elders, they will tell you. When there is not enough and there is debt waiting at your door and there is no culture of hard work there is there is a struggle so and there are many other habits there are families uh, where there is no respect the parents are shouting at each other we are not saying people from such families should not marry, no. But your family, and there is no perfect family, that's one thing for sure. But your family can advise you that no, there are these things. And uh, where do you get an example? Let's get to the, the example of Samson. Samson, Judges chapter 14. And uh, the parents say, no, I've, I've loved this one. Parents say, no, man. Are there no daughters from your own family? Uh, your own tribe when we can marry there is no I have loved this one and I'll show you the destinies of two people we have one in Genesis chapter 24 you have Isaac Abraham sends Eliezer and Isaac gets Rebecca and uh, you have Genesis chapter 14 Samson sees a woman in Timna he says, I want you. And uh, he gets it. Isaac gives birth to Jacob and Esau, and he becomes a father of a multitude. Samson, whatever, we are never told about his children. Mm. He is just, he is strong. And uh, brings down those pillars. That's the end of him. There are no grandchildren who are, who are recorded. Nothing. That's the end of him. He, and if you want to enter into oblivion, there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. Uh, sorry. I am tempted to preach. Uh, but it's not preaching. It's interactive. Let me allow you to ask questions, bring your points, then we'll be closing. Uh, let me just give uh, a few minutes and uh, challenge your parents, they are here. Tomorrow they won't be here. Challenge them, they are here. And uh, I give you the license for today. Challenge them, they are here. Tell them that no, mom, when we talk about these issues of of love, etc. You frown. You say, right. So they are here. And uh, parents, we are together here. Uh, let's raise our hands. Don't worry. You will be seen on YouTube. No problem. Right. Quickly, let's, let's come. Let's contribute. Let's, we are talking. We are talking together as a family. Where 
the mother sees this way, and the father sees this way, what can I do as a Christian and a person to make the right decision? Good. Parents, you are here. At the times we hear you arguing in front of us. At times, dad may think this way and mom may think the other way. And uh, thank you for that very, very good question. Very, very good, good, good question. I know instances where mom and dad have fought. Mom say, no, that man is good. Allow my daughter to get married. Dad says, no. Over my dead body, if you marry, it's okay. The lobola, the, the dowry is yours. It, it, me, nothing. <laughs> Our parents may not be perfect. That's one thing for sure. They are not perfect. But generally, they love us. They care about us. In their imperfection, they care about us. And it does not mean that you have to do what your parents say ultimately. You have, you have grown up, you are mature, you can make your judgment, but their advice will help you. It will say something you may not have been seeing. There are instances where parents make mistakes in their judgment. And I know in one instance where a parent said my daughter cannot be married to this tribe the parent said no 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 it can't happen later on the parent said oh i wish i had uh, thought otherwise with maturity so that's true so you still make your own judgment at the end but your parents will help you to see one dimension you might not you have seen that's one and some some young people we see them that this one he is too clever uh, but he is too clever this boy and the way he is clever this girl she seems to be too clever there are things we have seen that you may not be seeing now but we may be wrong that's true, but we will help you to see something and also to reflect and think about something else. We are happier if you take your, your friend home, bring him home, you sit there, the chances of him or her abusing you are less if he is known to your daddy and mom the chances are much less. But if he is seeing you surreptitiously, he is meeting you clandestinely, in secret. Uh, it's easier in secret for hands to just move and uh, finally uh, land where they may not be supposed to land. Uh, but as long as this guy is known to your, to your parents. He thinks, hey, that man trusts me. That elder trusts me. And if I do this to his daughter, what will he think about me? Because the way he greeted me when I got to his home with his daughter, and he said, Sunny, welcome, nice to see you, Sunny. And if you had to hear that I was caught with this girl, no, let me not disappoint that man. But if he's not even aware that there is an affair and you are just meeting there in some hidden corner, uh, that's a recipe for a problem. Right. One more hand, then we close our session for tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate the lesson, especially the example of Abraham and but uh, my question is, now that I have to consult my dad, how will I know that she will go for the best choice better than my mom? Okay. <laughs> because my mom is his best choice. Mm. So what that means is, whoever, what does it look like my mom is not the best choice? <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. A difficult, difficult question, but there is, there is something also in, in psychology. They say usually when a young man looks for a wife, he looks for somebody who resembles his mom, both in a behavior and also in, in appearance. Now, you are saying your dad, his standard is mom, that is benchmark. And anything better than mom, he thinks this is not the right thing. What is right is what I saw. Right, maybe somebody will come after me and type answer that, but what we can say is your parents, they are not God, as we have said. They may have their misjudgments, but at least hear those misjudgments. Allow them to give you their wrong opinions than for you to shy away from those opinions. So get them. And usually, as parents, we have lived longer. When our wives were younger, and when we were younger, we were more handsome than we are today. And your moms were more beautiful than they are today. And we can see this girl when she becomes our age, how she will look. We can see those things that are, and for you, you think that girl will always be that age forever, uh, not here on earth, uh, in the new age, that's when it will happen. But here, people age, and we can see this girl, that no, this girl, she will get old and she would look like this. Will you endure her when she gets to that age? All right. We have lived. We have seen people young and getting old. Right, there was a hand. Number two. Okay, so I think my contribution will, um, I think, be to envelope um, some other points that have been given already. Um, uh, on the point where the father and the mother have got different opinions, my advice is that I think we're talking about the ideal family, where we have got the father and the mother who communicate. It's very important that we also, as mother and father, communicate about the spouse's importance. Let it not just be the time when the kid is saying, or the child is saying, I've got a boyfriend, or now I've got a girlfriend. So, but as parents, let's discuss the qualities of, of a future spouse. So that when that happens, we already have our own decisions and we've got our own ways of uh, evaluating what kind of a husband is an ideal husband, what kind of a, a, a wife is an ideal wife. So that we don't conflict. Of course, we have, we have different personalities, but once we have got those discussions at home, I mean, I think I want a, a, a son in law who's like this. How what about a daughter in law who's like this? So it's something that we, we discuss at home. And the other point that I wanted to bring about is that as parents, we wait until our students or our children have grown up and they want to bring their boyfriends home. Mm -hmm. let's, let's groom them. I think the teachers are here from the parent school that. Even at primary school, they talk about relationships. So let it just be a lesson at home when they are growing up about relationships. Not that they are we're preparing them to get married or to have a boyfriend. Not let those lessons be done at home. Huh? Why is it we watch these movies? This Ampama City. We also have the, the, the kids are watching the movie. They already know that they're relationships. They already know that they're sexy. They already know everything. But let them not get it from the television. Let us as parents start chatting, having dialogues with them, and change already. The, the, our kids and for their youth leaders, they talk about these things. But if they start home, they 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 they, they have got a better a, a better way of grooming the kids than them getting from outside. 
So if they know that my mom talks about boyfriends and, uh, and my mom or my father talks about girlfriends and boyfriends, it's not going to be a good thing to them. When the boy comes, they know that uh, we have already we at home we discuss, uh, we discuss the, 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 the good qualities that we find in a man or the good qualities that we find in a woman. So let's, as parents, let us talk to our children, let's chat, let's have interaction. Uh, interaction is on how um, on the qualities of the men or the women that we want them to help. The end. Uh, they think there's those are great servants who go home once. That's too late. For us to talk about relationships, what they already have them at Primark. They already read books about relationships at Primark. So we would rather be so much abreast with what is happening than being very conservative and say, ah, when well, they are 18, that's when we can start introducing these issues. We are at another level. We are already uh, living in a different setup altogether, different from the way we were told us. As a form six, we were told to don't have a boyfriend, you shouldn't be having a boyfriend. Any of you shouldn't be having a boyfriend. Primarily their boyfriends. But let's help them and guide them so that they know the importance of not having a boyfriend at that age. Then waiting until it is late. I think that is those are the things that I wanted to, to say. Thank you. Amazing. You know, you made me to to think. I would have asked my son to speak, but uh, maybe not today. <laughs> okay. uh, something interesting. You know, uh, at, uh, at primary and when we were out of here, when we were overseas for a short time, he would, uh, they would tell us, that so and so has a crash. The crash is so and so. Of course, he never told me about his own crash, and uh, that's okay. Let's leave it at that. But they would tell us that so and so, uh, the crash is so and so. And yeah, these days he is crashing so and so. And we thought it belongs there. No, that thing is here. Uh, are we saying it's right? No. Are we saying it's wrong? No, but we are saying it's day. And uh, if uh, we want to deny that it's day and say we will wait until they are 18 to talk about this subject, you might find a lot of harm has been done and you are waiting patiently for 18 and uh, a lot of harm has happened. So there is need to be really proactive. They are not living in our age. In our during our times, we were different. We used to write letters. Time and ability has allowed my pen to disco dance on this rough pen, a piece of paper shedding the tears of love. Yes, that's how it was in our days. But uh, I don't expect uh, a player to write such a letter. I, 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 will it work today if you write with us? It was written, kiss before you open. And uh, this is how it worked in our days, but not today. So what I'm saying is, as parents, let's understand we are living in a different age. Our children are different from us. And we have to respond with much more information, with much eclecticism, with a lot of wisdom in our age. Thank you. Let me invite the, the chairman. You, the, you have the family director. If you can be kind to give us the closing prayer and wrap it, wrap it up for us. Um, good evening. Good evening. We want to thank you so much for coming to tonight's presentation and the table. May God bless you. May God wish you bless you. Um, we are continuing to encourage each and every one of us to continue coming. We are just beginning. This is just the beginning. How was it? <laughs> we are going to expect even more to proceed with the week. Um, at this time, I think we may stand as I pray. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful this evening for such powerful presentations that come to us at this time and they come at the right time. We want to pray 
important, especially I thought that you may not sin against you. May you continue to bless us until the end of this week as we receive these presentations. May you continue to bless our facilitators, our presenters. May you bless their families as they bless us all here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.